Does Foxtel's new sports streaming service KO itself? And should we be excited about Disney Plus? Vertical Hold, Behind the Tech News, is proudly brought to you by Belkin. Welcome to Vertical Hold, Behind the Tech News, where we talk to Australia's leading technology journalists to get the stories behind the news of the week. I'm Alex Kidman, and I'm joined by a man who remembers when streaming service meant floating in a tie out along the local creek, Mr Adam Turner, as we go behind the headlines in search of the big picture. Joining us this week to talk all things streaming is TV commentator and Decider TV editor Steve Malk. Steve, welcome back to the show. Hello, everyone. This week, we're punching below the surface to sort out Foxtel's sports streaming strategy, as well as the incoming offers for Disney Plus and CBS All Access. But first, over to the mighty Vertical Hole Tech News Desk. Adam, what's new in tech? The Australian government has decided not to abolish the Telecommunications Industry Ombudsman after consultation found strong support for the external dispute resolution scheme amongst both consumers and telcos. The report is the first in a series of three reports as part of the Consumer Safeguards Review. Along with looking at complaints handling and consumer redress, the review is also looking at the reliability of telecommunication services, as well as choice and fairness in the retail relationship between customers and their telcos. Interestingly, the Ombudsman also recommended that the TIO's powers be expanded to enable it to award compensation for non-financial loss when customers are given the runaround. NBN Co has announced that from next year, it'll offer NBN satellite ISPs what it calls Skymuster Plus plans. It's not scrapping the old Skymuster plans, but if you're in an NBN satellite area, you may want to upgrade anyway. Skymaster Plus plans won't count data for essential internet services, things like web browsing, essential software upgrades or internet banking, for example. Although your Netflix binges will still totally count. Boo! Boo! There's even the promise that if network conditions are right, you might be able to get more than 25 meg downstream on the new Skymaster Plus plans. No word as yet, though, about how much they'll actually cost. The Australian Greens have called for a $1.3 billion federal telecommunications concession fund to be established, along with a $250 million NBN migration program to assist more people with the cost of taking up NBN services in regional areas. At the same time, the party also wants to complete the NBN using best choice technology, having previously criticised the multi-technology mix as well as ensure that the infrastructure remains publicly owned rather than being sold off after the rollout. The Greens technology policy also includes establishing a digital rights commissioner, repealing the mandatory data retention scheme, and strengthening Australia's privacy laws. It's a busy time at Google HQ right now, with the search giant finally starting to roll out the night sight camera for Pixel phone owners that it announced at the launch of the Pixel 3 handsets. Nightside allows you to take substantially better low-light pictures with just the single lens of the Pixel, Pixel 2 or Pixel 3. If you're not so much a low-light night type, you're more of a morning type, Google's also commissioned a special Wiggles adventure to wake up the younger crowd, although presumably not Jeff because he's already left. It works via the Google Assistant, so you can keep the kids happy with just an assistant-powered phone or speaker. Convincing the kids that you haven't somehow trapped Emma, Lockie, Anthony or Simon in your Google Home Max is up to you, however. So, Alex, Skymuster hasn't had the best name over the years and they've messed around with the plans a bit. Now we're getting Skymuster Plus. Is this making up for its previous sins? Look, I think it's a step in the right direction in a lot of fairly important ways. It's really important to remember that the vast majority, not everyone, but the vast majority of people in the Skymaster footprint are incredibly remote. It's generally for more remote areas. There are some exceptions to that. So all of Norfolk Island is Skymaster. And there's a few spots, I think, in Tasmania, if I remember correctly, where entire towns are Skymaster, which is a little bit unfortunate in a rollout sense. And for some of them, they actually did get switched from being fibre to satellite, and that's quite the drop. But NBN Co basically saying, hey, look, we think we've got the capacity to let some more regular services run quite a free. I think that's quite big because you've got to remember – 
every single Sky Master plan has a data quota, and that's not something that is necessarily part of other NBN mixes. Now, now uh, the other thing, though, that it won't cover, and it won't cover at all, of course, is streaming media, and we're going to talk a lot of streaming media uh, in this episode. Um, Steve, do you think that's a do you think that's a huge roadblock for people? I think it will be, certainly for the success of any of the existing platforms or anything new. Uh, my parents, I, I'm going to challenge the idea that Sky Muster is only in really remote areas. My parents lived in mid, live in Midwest New South Wales on a farm outside a little town called Gilgandra. And the only way they with can Gilgandra. get the NBN is via Sky Muster. So, I mean, the boost to this kind of thing is great for them because even the, the, the cellular network out there is not great. Like, I have to call them on their landline. I can't call them on their mobile when they're inside the house because that's just how that is. Um, and and they, God bless them, are 71 and 68 turning 69. Um, not the greatest consumers of streaming media, but only because they don't really have the chance to access it. Yeah, I mean, I think... There's a there's a there's a physics difficulty at play here. Sure, because the satellites have a capacity, and they're trying to kind of balance that. And is uh, you know, as we all, in fact, in the technology industry saw coming, streaming was always going to start chewing up huge globs of that. And there's a there's a bit of a balancing thing here. I guess the benefit is that if you're if you're everyday web browsing, and if the updates to to Windows or Mac or Linux don't count, although I'll be really interested to see if they count Linux amongst that, having mm. said that. Uh, but if, if, you, if, you are, if your OS updates don't count, if your web browsing doesn't count, it means that whatever plan you're signed up to, you can use all that data for Netflix binging. Um, and there's even this theoretical prospect, although I think it'll be, the devil will be in the detail for this one, that you might get better than 25 meg peak speeds when it's not, when the network conditions allow is, is I think roughly the phrasing that they used. And I think that's essentially going to be, yeah, look, don't even think about it in busy peak evening periods. But if you're a bit more of a, you know, an early morning person, or even actually if you're doing a Netflix binge in the middle of the day on a work day, you might find that you get slightly better speeds. And as we know, that could lead to slightly better quality. I guess you'll then have to balance, hmm, do I really need to watch this in HD because then it's a bigger chunk of my quota. Or if you just know how to use the scheduling features on uTorrent. <laughs> Which my parents definitely don't. Um, it, I guess the, the challenge more than anything on this is let's compare some tech here. And I know that things change so rapidly in this in this situation. Foxtel are delivering 4K streams via satellite. Now we know that 4K is pretty hefty on the use, and that's you know it's dual streams and all sorts of stuff. Yet we're saying that the best we can get is, oh, we, but we can probably do better than 25 meg. Mm, they're doing better than 25 meg to deliver 4K to Foxtel subscribers. But, well, is that a like-for-like like comparison, though? Because what you're talking about is a single 4K dedicated broadcast stream mm -hmm. as opposed to on-demand any of a number of pieces of content which could be coming from any of a number of different places. Unless I'm you can force sure them all to watch polite. Netflix at the same time. <laughs> right, everybody, we're watching the next episode of Daredevil at 5 o'clock. Be there or miss out. <laughs> and go. Um, and go. I, I, I appreciate that, Alex. I acknowledge it's not apples to apples here, though I will offer that the technology exists for them to do it well. And in a thing in a streaming context, um, you know, Netflix, Stan, all of the ones that exist currently have spent a lot of money to make sure that they can deliver stuff to us really, really well. You know, to the, the end result is fine, acknowledging that the last mile or last hundreds of miles um, is out of their control. Um, so to that end, why not? Well, okay, I'll, I'll, t I'll, t I'll take the NBN case, which, you know, regular listeners will know I, d I don't always do. <laughs> um, for a start, you could make the obvious observation, it's not NBN's job to deliver entertainment products, it's NBN's job to deliver bits, and what the user does with those bits is up to them. Sure. Um, and there, there is this long-going argument about whether or not these heavy usage services should bear more of the weight in terms of carriage. And obviously with Foxtel, that is what they're doing. They're, they're saying, yep, yeah, this yeah. is our carriage system. 
We, we, we own it, we have it, we've invested in it to be this pure thing. Uh, I don't believe that Foxtel is saying, oh, by the way, on the same satellite, we're offering broadband services. We're not offering Foxtel satellite broadband, to the very best of my knowledge. Uh, they're doing a single dedicated play where NBN is trying to cover a multitude of uses and whilst there are there are economic benefits in entertainment and entertainment provision, which I'm not trying to downplay, the NBN has a slightly different role to play, I think. And, and I acknowledge that. And we can't control all of the things. And just because Auntie Joan wants to watch, you know, the first episode of Final Cut on Netflix while someone else is, you know, trying to download Windows updates, God bless them. Um, yeah, there's, there's those kinds of challenges that play into that. Though I know that the bandwidth requirement, the bandwidth requirement to deliver 4K is sizable. And yes, Foxtel get to control that. And and I hear you though, I would say to you that for most places, to be able to get a reasonably streamed, you know, I want to watch House of Cards and I don't want to have to wait, you know, buffering for hours to get it to look any good. I want it to just go and be reasonable quality, not 4K, maybe not even HD. Yeah, um, totally. That, that's totally agree with you. problematic. Yeah. Okay, so Adam, to quote from uh, one of my favourite bands, sports go sports. I promise I honestly totally care who wins. But as the regular listeners know, that's um, that's perhaps a bit of a lie. I'm not a big sports fan, but I'm kind of intrigued by KO, the new competitor to Foxtel that's owned by Foxtel. What's going on? Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one there because Foxtel's offerings have been a bit of a dog's breakfast for a few years in terms of streaming services and apps, and they were starting to finally get it all together under this one Foxtel Now umbrella, and it was sort of starting to make sense to consumers, make sense price-wise, and now they go, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to spin Sport out and have it in another app, but it's still in the first app. So, Steve, talk us through it. Why would you want to sign up for KO, that's K-A-Y-O, mm. as opposed to Foxtel now and get the sports package? Well, it's simple. The question is, are you not Alex? Uh, okay. And if you are not, right. sign Check. up. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it is all of the sports that Foxtel could get their hands on. Certainly everything that they have primary rights on, so the big money spinners for them, AFL, NRL, they're throwing basketball in there, then they're layering all sorts of stuff like um uh, uh, Major League Baseball, they're throwing in what's that other thing? World Surfing Championships. I think they're even dropping netball stuff in there. They're doing everything that they can to make this your one stop sporting shop. Now, they copped a lot of criticism. You go. Do they have dodgeball on the Ocho? Oh, gee, I hope so. Oh, my goodness. I hope so. Um, <laughs> They copped a lot of criticism off the back of, uh, it was recently like month, two months ago, where they changed up again their Foxtel Now packages and made it criminally expensive for you to be able to get it. And it all falls into place now, doesn't it? Because KO's here and we would prefer you do it that way. But why do they prefer we do it this way? Because this is one of the things I find genuinely fascinating because KO, especially at the base level, and this has got to be a plus for the sports fans, and mm. yeah, maybe not me, uh, is cheaper. Like, it's substantially cheaper. It's like 25 bucks a month for their basic package, yep. which is way cheaper than Foxtel now. Yes. Now, it is obviously, it's sports and only sports, although they're doing some unique stuff, as I understand it, around the presentation and not spoiling stuff and, mm-hmm. and multi-streaming and so on, uh, and, and picture in picture and so on. Um, but it's, it's, it's cheaper and conventional TV logic says that one of the most expensive things out there are sports rights. Mm. Mm. Oh, absolutely. You talk about the NFL, the ARL, and the cricket rights and the money that Foxtel have just poured into that. Uh, and in 4K, uh, all of this, all of that weight lands in Foxtel's, you know, sort of back pocket as far as what they have to deal with in that situation. This is pushing the argument out of Foxtel's and into the consumer's home. So now if you are... Um, sports fan where and you live by yourself or you live in a house where there are other sports fans ko is perfect for you because all we want is sport we just want sport 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 however if you find yourself living in a place where there are other people that consume television and want to access the other things that foxtel have to offer basically if you live with me ko is not for you because well, this, if you've got people in your house that love sport and they want to get it, cricket is a great example. We're staring down the first summer where not all of the cricket is on free to wear. So there are 
fans. Sorry, it was my turn to be. Cricket, that's the one with the ball, right? That is yeah, correct. Yeah. Usually red, sometimes white, now even pink. Sometimes um, tampered awesome. with. Yeah, yeah. So that game in its new deal with Foxtel and Seven means that some, well, all of the one-day internationals, all of the T20 internationals, and some of the BBL are Foxtel exclusive content, all available on KO. Not but they're also on Foxtel on now? But they're uh, on yes. Foxtel now. So, so if you've got the sports difference? through Foxtel now, it's still good. KO? It just costs but, you more money. But are you? I think there might be a few little things like the Sky Racing Channel and the, the dedicated channels for some of the Premier League teams, but is there anything major that would make you get one over the other in terms of content? Sports fan, sports fan, sports fan. And and the ability to, as you mentioned, the, the platform that they've built with KO or, or bought in, to be fair, um, has lots of great multi-screen, um, like picture in picture, not just one, but they've got it like a default mechanism where you can have the main sport you're watching as the largest picture. And then down the side, I think it's three or four other channels or other sports things running at the same time. Hey, here's this other stuff that you wanted to keep an eye on. Not because it's got stuff the other one hasn't, but because it will let you watch things in a way the other one doesn't. And and they are working very hard to make sure that the KO platform uh, will deliver to fans. Because as we have seen, even earlier this year, with Optus Sport falling apart uh, over round ball football, um, they just want to get all of the bugs out now. So the fact that we're talking about KO technically is us making stuff up because Foxtel haven't delivered us the official launch of KO. It's in beta. We can go to the website and sign up, but we cannot get any PR information out of them because it's not officially a thing. It's not yet launched. Although, I mean, I'm curious about the, the multi-screen thing. Uh, and obviously, not a sports guy. The, 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 the nasty comedy part of my brain says, so sports are so dull you have to watch three at once before it becomes interesting. Huh. But, uh, but actually, the, realistically, that is, that is unfair. Uh, I would have thought the whole thing with sports is you are so invested in the game, whatever mm -hmm. your the game is. Why do you want, like, you know, the baseball and... You, the different football code running in a in a small side of that. I, I I'm I'm not across this. Uh, as much What's... as anything, particularly if you're a punter, you want to keep track of the games that you've laid some money down on, or you're interested. You're watching uh, the AFL right now, but there's this other NRL game I'm waiting to see, or has started, and there's a slight overlap. So I'll keep that in the smaller thing, so I can just quickly flick from A to B during an ad or during a break, well, not an ad, but because it'd be ad-free on KO, but a break in play allows me to swap over, see the other one and swap back without missing anything. I'd find that super frustrating. But again, it, this is, as we've established, this is totally not for me. Um, the naming is interesting as well. Do you think Foxtel's trying to get away from that kind of grr, anti-Foxtel thing by going, here's something, and it's not Foxtel KO the same way that now is Foxtel now. It's just KO, totally different font. Do you, is that, do you think there's there's some of that? I think it's a really definite play to establish it as a brand within the sports market that allows punters, people that, that uh, enjoy sport, to know, I want to get my sport. It will cost me 25 bucks to be able to watch it on up to two screens at once. And I go here to ko.com.au to get all of that and make it happen. And they're only doing HD. But as we said before, when we were discussing satellite, Foxtel can do 4K. How much does that matter? <sighs> Look, I'm going to say probably not much to start with. You know, they're, they're, Foxtel are going very heavy on 4K is available on the IQ4. We talked about that previously. Uh, and, and pushing very heavy around the, the IQ4 and the set-top box and the big screen experience. I think that we will see um, there's the capacity for 4K to reveal itself in KO's life, though to have it on HD on something the size of an iPad is probably as good as you'd want, right? You're, not, you're really starting to push your luck if you go to anything bigger than HD on those screens just because of the resolution they offer. There's precious few screens actually that go up to 4K mm. in that size and smaller. Although actually, that brings in the other thought that I've had about KO, which, and again, my interest is on the business side. I was going to say, for a guy who's not interested in sport, you've been thinking about this a lot. <laughs> you've been, I think you yeah, may have perfect. discovered your secret. I think he's coming out of the closet. <clears throat> the uh, is, is the Telstra side of it. Mm. Because Telstra has the whole exclusive thing on, what is it? I think it's AFL, NRL, 
and netball. Netball, that sounds right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it's only for screens up to, if I remember correctly, up to seven inches in size, which has made a lot of sports yes. fans very unhappy. Um, now, KO kind of seems to straddle that. But at least, well, I mean, right now, it's it's. I believe it's browser and Chromecast only, but there's this promise that mm-hmm. there might be an app at some point. For Telstra, of course, it's a big play to say, hey, you know, sign up for a phone plan and, and you can watch all of your, all of your favourite ball code, whatever that might be, for nothing. Mm-hmm. There's no data charge. You don't have to pay a yes. subscription fee. Where does I, I wonder where Telstra goes with that in a KO world, whether or not, and nothing, I, I know nothing in this, Space and obviously I know very very little about sports, despite what Adam might claim. Uh, but uh, do, does Telstra continue with a right? You just get these free app based stuff because they've got deals directly with those codes. Yeah. Or do they start bundling Ko? And if they start bundling Ko, are you still going to get it data free? I, I quite think free? Th- there's certainly the benefit to Telstra in their relationship with Foxtel. Um, using KO as a marketing tool, you know, sign up and we'll give it to you for six months and it's data free and those sorts of things. Like you said, what we start to wade into here though, is the pretty murky world of sports rights and media organizations, because nine, for example, when they sign a sport as they did with the NRL, well, I'm going to say it was nearly two years ago now, when they re-signed that deal, it's on all of the screens of nine. So they make sure that if you want to watch the NRL, you can watch it on everything everything. Now for Telstra, that means that, oh, but we wanted to do this. Oh, blah, blah, blah. They didn't come to the party. They can offer it. They can make it available, but they don't get it exclusively because that obviously costs them a whole bunch more money. Um, The AFL are keen to have that kind of deal with Seven, but they didn't get it. Telstra did weigh in in that that deal worth $11 billion. So there's different parts to it. However, Telstra's ability to deliver KO as a product that they are part owners in is a huge benefit to sports on the go because even the traditional broadcast um, networks like seven and nine are seeing more and more and more live uh, BVOD where guys, particularly guys, pardon me, but sports fans are leaving work, going from work to place where the game is on, but knowing the game is starting or they want to catch the pregame stuff or even the game is on, they will watch it on phone get to place, turn off and go and then watch on big screen with mates. So that's a big part of making sure that from a um, TV network point of view, they still get involved. KO can then be engaged in that as well because now I'm not having to rely on nine. I've got this and it gives me these added benefits. And then I get to venue or I get to mates place and they've got KO are doing it there or however we're watching it. Maybe even it's via 4K on Foxtel. Yeah, I guess there's a technical challenge for Telstra there, though, because they've got, they do have some infrastructure in delivering specifically AFL, NRL, and so mm-hmm. on um, to mobile devices, which is what part of the reason they've stated to me that they can do it quite a free is because they can control that and they can optimize it so that if you've got four thousand people all heading for sure. the same pub to watch, they don't have to, they don't have to send exactly four thousand streams because they can share it around. Yeah. With KO, if they've because they, they've got a much much wider swathe of sports, yeah. a much wider swathe of streams, and even I guess if they're going to extend it to the app, if you could do screen in screen, although you'd then be watching your game on like a postage stamp. Don't know how well that'd work, but they've then got to deal with so much more data. I, I wonder if we wouldn't in fact hit an Optus Sports like crash situation with lots of frustrated sports fans. And and I would only surmise, Alex, that I think that's maybe why they haven't got heavy into the app process yet uh, or announced that there is an app, though we all know there will be an app come. That's a guarantee. Uh, and the, why they have launched KO in beta right now so they can do that and test it and have it ready for when they do launch it in December to be able to say we are confident that we have all but all of the bugs out and of And they the haven't system. done the Optus thing of launching it just before the EPL starts or just before the Olympics starts yeah. and then it all falls over. As you say, it's not the height of the footy. So, you know, They haven't launched it for the grand final. They haven't launched it for the mm-hmm. Boxing Day test. Now is that smart time to get in yes. when there's a little bit of a lull and people will cut you a bit of a slack while you work out the bugs. Yeah, and look, for, for people who want to chime in, it's a 14-day free trial. You can get in and test it. It's month to month. There's no ongoing contract. You can get out when, say, maybe you're a cricket fan and that's why you want it. When the season's done, you can jump out. The real test will absolutely come when the winter sports kick on because there's certainly a number of um, summer sports that we'll watch that KO will benefit from. 
But by the time you start throwing um, motor racing and AFL and NRL at once onto KO, then we're really going to start to see whether they've got it working. So, Alex, speaking of streaming services, but getting away from sport, we've got a whole lot of other services coming, but we don't know a hell of a lot about them. What's going on? Yeah, there's an awful lot that we know and don't know simultaneously, which probably means that we're capable of making so tea. So it's at the same a time. streaming service. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the bigger pieces of news in recent times has been Disney announcing the naming for its new streaming service, which will just be called Disney Plus. Oh, someone's Um, earning their money in the marketing department. The the, the logo team must have worked for weeks on that one. (laughs) Um, And it's going to launch in the States next year. They are being incredibly vague about international expansion plans, but I think you don't have to do too much crystal ball gazing to say that an awful lot of that will relate around to where all of those international rights lie. Uh, Disney is, of course, hoping to be a big winner in all of this because it wants a huge piece of that streaming subscription pie. The big loser in all of this is likely to be Netflix because basically I think they've already run through the last of their new Disney movies that they're going to get in that sense via in terms of Star Wars and and Marvel and, and that kind of thing. Um, those will all be hitting uh, Disney+. Plus. They've also announced just a handful of new shows, but f- for most of them, with the possible exception of a high school musical show, but I guess there's probably someone out there excited about that, uh, they're, they're leaning heavily on their big brands because we're talking Star Wars and we're talking Marvel. Steve, what have we got to, theoretically, if it ever comes to Australia, to look forward to? Oh, heaps. Like, Heaps. Uh, because you're right, those those big marquee brands, Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, that the only place we'll be able to get that content from a streaming point of view is Disney Plus, assuming it launches here. And I'm going to say to you, they'd be mad not to. Uh, this is absolutely a challenge to Netflix and reflects Disney's investment in the way that they are throwing money around. For example, they're picking up um, Fox's entertainment catalogue which, by the way, includes a 60% share in Hulu. So guess what else is going to come to Australia? Probably next year, maybe 2020. Hasn't a Hulu missed its boat? I've lost track of the number of times Hulu was supposedly thinking about coming to Australia. Yeah, but in part, that's Hulu's problem. Though, I mean, anyone in Australia that wants Hulu is getting Hulu. Hulu has a very definite place in the market in that they have locked away a whole bunch of uh, particularly nostalgic, but you know, older series and shows and things that maybe people thought were dead or you know, stuff that we used to enjoy and it goes way back. Their library is pretty broad. Um, the stuff that falls out of first or second run streaming rights, Hulu pick up. And they're, of course, making their own content. Um, so in the midst of this, for Disney to say, we own this much of Hulu, the bulk of Hulu, and we've got Disney+, Plus. It makes sense for them to be able to say, here is a service, Australia, Europe, UK, whatever, where you can sign up for Disney Plus and you can sign up for Hulu because we're not going to put the stuff on Hulu on Disney Plus and we don't want to then cannibalize our brand new streaming service and put some of it over here on Hulu. Just here's two more things on top of, if in Australia's case, on top of Netflix and Stan and Foxtel Now and Hey You and QuickFlix. So I have a I have a horrible feeling about this. I hope you're right, but I have this horrible feeling that the local rights situation might have Disney looking at it, looking at how much money it's going to make. Because let's face it, the one thing Disney loves above all else is money. Yep. And saying no. Nah. And my logic around this is what we could call Amazon Prime Video. <laughs> I forgot about them. Part of me. Well, yes. look, everyone does, and and, and the reason everyone does, and I for think good reason. No, no, I think it's a pity they've got some excellent first yeah, run homecoming shows. Homecoming is great. Own. Jack Ryan is great. Mrs. Maisel's Maisel great. Is awesome. My, my Man in the High shows. Castle. Yeah. Man in the High Castle was good. Yeah. Here's the problem. I think we've listed like 90% of the local catalogue in that yeah, last it. 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. And that's the big problem. And whereas, for example, in the UK, in the US, Amazon Prime Video is a lot better. I mean, it's, it's a lot more compelling. There's a lot more content. They launched late here. They could not get the rights to the things that, they had elsewhere, mm. and and it, I mean it actually travels with you if you if you sign into Amazon Prime Video in the UK, which I did recently. You've suddenly got this huge library at your command, and you just realise, wow, we get a we get a really tiny library in Australia for this stuff. Now Disney's in this position where, yeah, Netflix. It's obviously like you know, 
the uh, the pitchforks are out between Netflix and Disney. Mm. You won't see Disney stuff on Netflix, but there's a lot of Disney stuff on Foxtel, for example, and there's a lot of money in play there. Yep. And you could look at the HBO example where we don't have – is it Go, their streaming service? I think it is off the top of my head. Yeah, HBO uh, Go. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. don't have Go here because of the Foxtel deal. I could totally see money – and the expected profit that Disney might make versus what they get out of Foxtel, what via ancillary rights, especially through Fox, that they might get out of Stan in some cases, mm. some of the stuff that Nine and Seven might have, even potentially some of the stuff that Ten, even though it's obviously CBS owned, might have. They might just go, look, this is actually too hard. And whilst we could obviously launch, you know, an all Lilo and Stitch channel, and in some ways that'd be awesome. <laughs> um they might just go, look, no, we're not launching there, leaving people to, you know, work out if they can actually do the old school Netflix geo hop trick with a VPN. And, and I, the interesting thing is I reckon you've kind of nailed it. And the problem is new versus old. Disney Plus is new and Disney are circling the wagons to make sure that when they launch in a, a region in an area that the only place to get Disney stuff is Disney Plus. So... I suspect what we'll see is the deals that they may have with Fox, uh, Foxtel Now, uh, Stan, whoever, to have their gear. A lot of it is is movie-based and will fall away, right? It's limited time anyhow. And a lot of the series that they're talking about dropping are original new content to Disney+, Plus, not stuff that has pre-existed, where Hulu has the problem, where um, The Handmaid's Tale has a deal with um, SBS, yeah. So they can't pick that up, so they have to start limiting and carving away at their library. And that might mean that they go, well, okay, so Hulu doesn't come to Australia, but Disney Plus absolutely does. Uh, and I would be deathly surprised if we don't get like a global launch for that when it comes in 2019, not just America, but America, Europe, the UK, um, right through and including little old us down under. And so, Steve, we're still waiting for CBS All Access as well. What's the story there? Oh, I can't believe we're waiting. I mean, at 10s, uh, uh, what do they call them? They, are they just straight up fronts? I think they are. Everyone makes up their own name for this now. Um, they they talked about, because they had the people from CBS there, the fact that 10 All Access is coming. So a rebranded CBS All Access. And their model primarily is going to be, if you missed last night's episode of The Bachelorette, jump onto 10 play so it will still exist and watch it there. But the time that it's there for is much, much less. So you've only got a week or two weeks to watch it there before you jump over and you won't have the entire season, only the last couple of eps. 10 All Access will have everything. Now they haven't confirmed an ed, a, a launch date other than December, air quotes. They haven't given us a price. That's all guesses. They haven't given us platforms. That's all guesses, though reasonably educated guesses. Uh, And they haven't given us an idea of catalog other than CBS All Access, though we know that some of the key stuff from CBS All Access is already tied up in deals with other networks. Thank you for the good fight, SBS. And they can't take Star Trek off from either. The Star Trek discovery is locked into to Netflix, even though they might lose it in other places, we will get it here. Yes, and that's we all will I care continue about. <laughs> to get. That's right. We'll get Discovery on Netflix yeah. in Australia. However, the that's new probably short, the end. well, the new short yeah. stuff, uh, Star Trek stuff, Netflix passed on. Oh, okay, interesting. So, Steve, if I understand you correctly, for Ten Play, what we're really talking about here is short-term restricted content, and gee, that always works so well with the Australian <laughs> audience, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, hopefully it means that they stop trying to shovel the same ad into every episode seven times that we all have to put up with when we use 10 Play right now. Um, as far as 10 All Access, we've heard that there will be uh, at least an ad-free option, if not entirely ad-free. I think they would be doing that at their peril. But for 10 Play, it's likely still to be full of ads. And yeah, look, it's going to be a difficult sell to go, but I used to go to 10 Play to watch every episode of The Bachelorette. And now I can't. You're telling me if I need to do it, though the compelling reason is if you are a fan of that series or that genre, not only do they have every ep of this season, but every season of The Bachelorette and the American version and, and, and. 
I'm CBS starting to think cares. I've, I'm starting to think I've wandered into the wrong podcast because sports bachelorette. <laughs> there's nothing here for. I'm going back to iView where they've got plenty of Doctor Who folks. <laughs> I just used the bachelorette as a primary piece of real estate that Ten are very proud of, and at time of recording is staring down the finale tonight. Well, that just about wraps up yet another episode of Vertical Hold. Thanks to Steve for joining us for the show. It's always great talking to you guys. Thank you. Now, as always, we love to get your feedback on the show. Got an opinion on streaming rights or which streaming services you would or wouldn't subscribe to? Let us know via Twitter or the Vertical Hold Facebook page. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And remember, if you like what you hear, hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends. Share it on social media. Come and have a chat to us and tell us what you think. Vertical Hold. Behind the Tech News is proudly brought to you by Belkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cleared right up. The ceiling cleared it right up. Yeah, yeah.